Good morning, morning. and welcome to worship this morning. Uh, A few announcements before we begin. Um, As many of you are aware, we are gearing up for our 150th uh, celebration. I was actually uh, getting my teeth cleaned on Friday, and the hygienist (laughs) asked where I worked and what I did, and I told her, and she's like, wow, I live just down the road. And I said, yeah, and she's like, well, how long has that church been there? And I said, oh, only 150 years. She's like, really? (laughs) So 
I think we take for granted um, this church has been here for 150 years, so we are very excited to celebrate and have been making lots of preparations for that. And um, that being said, um, we are also um, making t-shirts, and so today I've gotten the word it's the final day. So if you would like a t-shirt ordered for the 150th, please get that into Tracy by today. Um, if you or family, friends, guests are coming, if you could notify that on the handout so we know about how many chicken dinners to plan for, that would be very helpful as well. Um, also, another event coming up on Wednesday, July 11th. Uh, we are going to be serving families in need in the community through the Agape Food Ministry. So if anybody would like to join us in helping package up food um, on Wednesday, July 11th, please indicate um, that you and your family will be coming as well. <coughs> Prayer requests, prayers of praise, prayers of pain, prayers of protest. You would like to lift up for us this morning. Yes. Rochelle, she's a daughter of a friend of ours. Starting with the addiction. We'll be lifting up Rochelle. Thank you. <coughs> Others? <coughs> Please. No, never too late. Any men that would like to join in the singing, please see Linnell. Yes. Pastor, I have praise now on Thursday. Wonderful. Prayers of praise. Yes. Nice to see you. We want to thank everyone for everyone's prayers and everyone's yeah. encouragement and support. Wonderful. Thank you. Others. Um, I have received prayers for um, Jeff Hertenstein's brother Craig in need of healing, and also um, one of Chris's military friends that he served with passed this week, and they had a funeral on Saturday. So we'll be lifting up James Smith and his family in our prayers. Um, also, prayers of praise. Um, there are over 30,000 youth that are gathering in Houston. Um, this past week, and then, I don't know if any of you have been following, but it's been neat to see all the pictures and the, the impact that it, that it can make when we gather together to be the church. And so um, we'll lift up prayers of praise and um, fruits from that uh, blessing in Houston. Today's um, scripture readings are about healing. And so I ask you to prepare your hearts and your minds to hear God's word and for Christ to heal you today.
worship in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone, and give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow in the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Almighty and merciful God, can be seated and the young people can join me up front. In our Bible stories today, we are going to hear about healing, how Jesus has the power to heal us and how sometimes we don't often see healing that's the question many people have asked me um, pastor how come we don't hear or see these miraculous healings today and so it made me think about all the senses that god gives us to heal so um, it's not just our eyes that sees healing. What are the other senses that we use that God gives us? Our eyes, our nose, our mouth, hearing. What else? Today, and, and feel in the gospel story today, there's a woman who's been six sick for 12 years. That's a really long time, isn't it? Praying for God to heal her. And she had the courage to take her hand and touch Jesus, and she was healed. She took a risk, right? To reach out her hand. So we're going to practice that today. Each of you are going to chance to reach out your hand, close your eyes, and stick your hand in this bag. <laughs> And see what you touch. Who wants to go first? Okay. Close your eyes. Yep, cover your eyes. Ready? And touch it. What do you feel? A stuffed animal. Let's see. Pull it out. It is a stuffed animal. How could a stuffed animal bring healing to people? What do you think? to get well. It's nice and soft, and when you're scared at night, you can cuddle it. This animal was actually given to our daughter when we moved. One of her friends gave this to her to give her comfort because she had to meet new friends. So stuffed animals can bring healing and comfort. What else is in here? Hmm. Who else wants to go next? All right, close your eyes, reach in the bag. What do you feel? A card. <gasps> what is it? Feel it. Is it smooth or is it rough? It's kind of rough. It's sandpaper. <laughs> How could sandpaper bring healing to people? What do they use sandpaper for? Have you ever used sandpaper, seen somebody use sandpaper on wood? When it's rough and it, it has splinters, somebody could get hurt. Yeah. So they smooth it out, right? Yeah. So you don't get splinters, right? Yep. One of our members in our congregation makes these beautiful hand crosses that are nice and smooth, that fits in your hand and gives people comfort. But it wouldn't be comfortable in our hand if it wasn't for sandpaper, right? Yeah. Who else wants to go? Okay. Reach your hand. Close your eyes. Reach your hand in there. You feel anything? What's it feel like? A car? How could a car be in this bag? A little car. How could a car bring healing to other people? What do you think? If somebody's sick, if you're sick, and you need to go to the doctor, what do you need to get there? A car! A car. Yes, instead of walking, you have a car, right? Or if somebody's in the hospital, you can go and visit them, you need a what? A car. A car. Okay, 
So the final one, who wants to go? One of you guys want to go? Okay. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, put your hand in the bag. And what do you feel? What do you A hand? You got me! <laughs> I think something that's even more powerful in this story today is the power of touch. Um, not only did she reach out and touch Jesus, but that Jesus touches us through just the contact of our hands. That that brings comfort, knowing that somebody's there with us holding our hands, right? So let's hold hands and let's pray for Jesus to heal us and to heal those who touch your hands, okay? Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for the power of your healing presence. Please bless these children, bless the hands. As they touch other people, may they be healed by your presence through them. In your son's name we pray. Amen. You got the healing power. Go to work. <laughs>first reading for today comes from Lamentations 3, 22 through 33. The book of Lamentations is one of our most important sources of information about the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians in 587 BCE. Though the people admit that God's judgment was just, today's reading declares a ferent trust that God will not leave them forever. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never came to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it. To put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope. To give one's cheek to the smittler and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. The response of reading is from Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as if I was going down to the grave. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me strong as the mountains. When you hide your face, I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you the The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 8 through 7 through 15. Paul encouraged the Corinthians to honor their commitment to participate in the collection his churches are organizing for the Christians in Jerusalem. 
He presents Jesus as an example of selflessness, stewardship, and reminds them that Christians have received abundantly so that they can share abundantly. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the eagerness of others, earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you may become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may become matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of the fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. According to Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in a boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered him, and he was by the sea. One of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, he fell at Jesus' feet, and he begged him repeatedly. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. Now a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. There was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus. She came up behind him in a crowd, and she touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped. She felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone from him, Jesus turned to the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the crowd is pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. The woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling. She also fell down before Jesus' feet. And she told him the truth. And Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your diseases. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leaders of the house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what he had said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow except Peter and James and John and the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, 
He saw the commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make such a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at Jesus. But he put them all outside, and he took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and he went in where the child was. Jesus took her by the hand, and he said, To Lithicum, which means, Little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the good news for you this day. Praise to you, Lord Christ. One day last week, my phone buzzes and a text comes through. It's one of my dear friends from Minnesota who I haven't talked to in a while. And the text reads, please keep my husband and I in your prayers. I've been diagnosed with chronic Lyme's disease and it's really starting to take a toll on our marriage. A few seconds later, Another chime goes off on my phone, this time from Messenger on Facebook. Now it's an update from an old friend from high school whose cancer has returned after five years of being hidden. Now she's asking for prayers as she goes through surgery and treatment again. A couple minutes later, our church phone rings. A member of our congregation has fallen gone to the hospital and is in need of our community support and prayer. These are just the prayer requests I received in a few minutes last week. I can't imagine the prayer requests for healing God receives every second of every day. So that makes me wonder this morning with you all, what is your prayer request of God today? Have you gotten on your knees lately and begged Jesus for healing? Healing for a family member or a friend? Or maybe even healing for you? For in our Bible stories this morning, it appears that everyone is in need of some kind of healing. In our first reading from Lamentations, we hear God's people request for healing and hope as they grieve the destruction of the way life used to be for them. The first line of this poem in chapter 1, verse 1 reads, How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become that she used to be great among the nations. When people pray for healing or ask for prayers of healing, they're often praying for how things used to be. When life used to be perfect, when their bodies used to be strong, when their relationships used to be secure. Maybe these have been your prayers of lament as well. Prayers of lament for our world, prayers of lament for our community, and even prayers of lament for your own relationships. People have often shared their prayers of lament with me, and it often sounds something like this. I remember when the churches used to be full, I remember when people used to pray at school. I remember when marriages used to stay together. And maybe this is your prayer of lament as well. But for me, I never knew of a time when churches used to be full. I just knew of a time when my mom dragged me to church every Sunday. 
I remember praying at school all the time because I was so desperate to do well, especially when I didn't study the night before. I remember not knowing how to pray for my parents' marriage. I remember as a kid one time praying for them to stop fighting. I remember praying for them to get help. I finally remember praying for my parents to separate peacefully. And now I wonder what my kids are praying for me about. <laughs> the poem from Lamentations for us today reminds us it's about our perspective. When you're the one in it, when you're the one so desperate in need of God's healing power, it's really hard to wait for the Lord to provide it for you. For the author dares to pray in verse 24, The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. Now, his soul might be telling his head to wait patiently, but I'm sure his head is probably telling his soul, I can't wait any longer. This is just too painful. I can't just sit here and do nothing, Lord. The prayers of lament not only grieve the loss of how things used to go, but it also grieves the loss of the future, the loss of what they hoped would happen in their life, but never will. You see, in our gospel reading this morning, we hear sounds of lament, sounds of wailing and begging on their knees for Jesus to heal them. And we also hear how Jesus does heal them. But what we don't hear is the prayers that still go unanswered in their life after they are physically healed. You see, for instance, the woman with the hemorrhage who's been extremely poor, handing over all her money to all the medical professions, and it appears that she has no family, no friends to support her because she's been shunned by her community. Yes, Jesus heals this woman physically, but who will accept her back into the family? How is she going to make any money? Her prayers still go unanswered when it comes to her new life as an abandoned peasant woman in Palestine. And yes, Jairus' 12-year-old daughter lives to see another day, but she will also have to learn to live the rest of her life as a poor woman in the land of Roman occupation. If she lives even another 40 years, she will experience the first Jewish revolt and the destruction of their beloved temple. So here's the point that I find interesting about our gospel stories this morning. Is that the older woman who bled and suffered and prayed alone for 12 years, precisely as long as Jairus' daughter has been alive, yet they both have an encounter with Jesus on the same day. A moment in their lives that not only alters their physical bodies, but something more miraculous than that. Jesus transforms their perspective, their purpose, and their faith to persevere through any future sufferings they would endure again and again and again. You see, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when you walked in here and came to worship this morning, maybe you have not gotten the diagnosis yet. Maybe there are more tests on the way. None of us know what struggles lie before us right around the corner. But the good news today is that Jesus promises you this. Your faith has made you well. 
and your faith will ultimately make you well in the future too. Now, I don't know what texts or emails or phone calls you're going to receive this week asking for prayers. Whoever or whatever diseases are on your hearts and your minds this week, take with you Christ's words of healing. Do not fear, only believe. Do not fear. Only believe. Say it with me. Do not fear, only believe. Do not fear, only believe. Amen.
people according to their needs. We receive joy and hope, and patience and suffering, and faith through prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you for healing power in our lives and in the world. Thank you that you hear our every need and your steadfast love never ceases. Help us, Lord, to wait in your promises until your salvation comes. Lord, in your mercy. Sorry, God. Sorry that the diseases we experience make us doubt your healing presence. Where there is the disease of judgment and hate for those who are different from us, bring healing. Where there is the disease of mental illness, physical illness, and spiritual illness, bring healing. Where there is the disease of selfishness, fear, and loneliness, bring your healing. Lord, in your mercy. And please, God, please send the breath and the power of your Holy Spirit to renew our faith in you and our faith in one another. We praise you, Lord, for the ELCA youth and adults gathering in Houston today. Renew their faith. May they be mindful of the power of being united church together. We also praise you for the healing we have seen in our loved ones next to us and around us. And we pray, Lord, that you continue to give them perseverance through the sufferings ahead. We also praise you for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. And we lift up to you, Nancy, Wendy, Steve, Ava, Kenneth, Jackson, Carl and Susan, and Jason and Darlene. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless their relationship with you and bless their relationship with one another. We also pray for those in our community in need of your peace and your healing presence. And we lift up to you, David, Corey, Terry, Heather, Lila, Rose, Debbie, Betty, Craig, Rochelle, and the family of James Smith. We also pray for the armed forces and all those you put upon our hearts today we name out loud or silently. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up all these spoken and unspoken prayers and we trust in your healing presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share the sign of peace with those around you.
us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and you nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. which our Lord was betrayed. He took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. that the Lord is good.
Please stand as you are able, and let us pray. 
We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have now refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God now blesses us and sends us in mission to the world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.